Okay, so the AD said, welcome to the stage, Coach James Johnson. So I got on the stage, and I said, thank you for having me today. I go around the country, and I work with athletes, helping them transition successfully from playing sports. So I'm here today to give you some tools as to how you can be prepared for when that day end, you can no longer play sports through the seminar. The objective for the seminar, when you leave here, you will know the percentage of student athletes leaving high school to play NCAA sports. When you leave here, you will know the percentage of student athletes leaving NCAA Division I to play professional you will also know the negative issues that occurs to student athletes after they can no longer play the game. You will hear four solutions that I implemented and I employed in my life to help me have a good transition for when my day ended from playing sports. In 1988 was my year. That was the year that it was time for me to be listed in a draft. Please listen. Now all of you, I hope you get a chance to experience that. I know all of you are working hard every day. You're made to high school sports and you're moving on and you want to get to a point where your name is called in the draft. As I shared with you, you will learn the percentage, okay? For as the people that's leaving college and actually going to play professional. Now this is according to the NCAA recruiting facts. At this point in time, if you wanted to, you can go to the, your phone and you can go to the search bar and you can pull this up. And you will see that this 2% number, what I want you to do first before that, is I want everybody in the auditorium to stand up. Just please stand up where you're sitting at. I want you to look around. I want coaches to stand, spectators to stand, you know, parents of you here to stand. Now all the student athletes take a head count. How many you see in here? 100 students? I mean, make, make, everybody's an athlete. How many you see? 100, 50, 125? Okay, now everybody sit down. Now I want you to stand, and I want you to stand. And I want everybody to take a look at those two students. They represent the only two, the 2% 2 that's gonna go play professional sport. This is according to the NCAA recruiting facts. I'm gonna break it down for you even further. Pure sports, <clears throat> men's basketball, 3% leaving high school to play college ball, 1%, that's one, moving from NCAA to play professional sports, 1%. Women's basketball, 4% moving from high school, where you are now, to go play division one sport, four of you, for professional, that's one student that's going on to play professional sport. Football, 6% moving from high school to NCAA. High school, where you are now, to NCAA. Two, that's those two students that were standing, 
moving from NCAA to play professional sports. The numbers are real. Baseball, 7% moving from high school to NCAA, 9% moving from NCAA to play professional sports. Volleyball, you got 4% 4, 4 moving from high school to play college. Again, you guys in high school, four of you will move on to play college, the rest of you will not. From college, you got those two that will move from playing NCAA, that's NCAA, top division one to play professional sport. Those numbers. Soccer, 6% moving from high school to NCAA, 2% moving from NCAA to play professional sport. This is real. If you don't get nothing else out of this seminar, I want you to keep this in mind that you are more than an athlete. I need to put that in your mind right now. If you don't get nothing else, you are more than an athlete. Now, I must share, because like I said, my draft day came in 1988. Let me share with you my resume to put me in that place for draft day. I scored over a thousand points my last two years of playing basketball. I was in AIA. District One Player of the Year. I led my team to the NAIA District One Conference Championship. I'm an honorable mention, All-American, most valuable player. I'm an MVP at my college. I was a leading scorer and a leading rebounder. I have several, and I mean several, all districts and all conferences awards. I'm a male athlete of the year. I was inducted into the high school hall of fame as well as the college hall of fame. I was selected to play in the Arkansas high school all-star game when I was coming out of high school. I had several, and I mean several NCAA division one offers. University of Arkansas Fayetteville, the flagship school up in Fayetteville. University of Arkansas at Little Rock, UALR. University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. University of Central Arkansas. These schools wanted me to come play for them. Mississippi State University, Nebraska University, Louisiana State University. All these schools highly recruited me when I was coming to the high school. Here as I continue to share with you, where I fell in the end in the 1988 NBA draft. The 
could have been the worst day. I was sad. Yes, I was. However, I had a symbol, a game plan. And this is what I'm bringing to you that I want for you to start adding to your portfolio when I leave here. The game plan that I assembled that helped me not have the worst day of my life. All right, but that's more to this thing here. This athlete, Mr. Phil, he wanted to commit suicide because he didn't make it. For the sake of time, he so that's that's a film showing him. He telling everybody that when he didn't make it, he, he went and laid down in the street and was hoping somebody run over him because he didn't make it. So uh, I'm gonna get those straight. I'm just sharing this with you. But going on with the seminar. Okay, so that was a research article that is created by these three PhDs, and they did a research on discovering that when athletes' eligibility ends. And at some point, everybody eligibility went in, went in, just like mine's. And when they no longer can play their sport, they most often have the following issues. One of them was that young man wanted to commit suicide. And here are some others that they found in their research. You will feel left stranded without playing sports. You will have high levels of stress and anxiety if you can no longer play. You will have a decreased sense of self-worth, social support, changes in mood. You will feel loneliness and isolation. You will experience some disordered eating. You will feel a loss of identity. You will exhibit lower levels of career maturity. The struggle to develop independent eating habits. You will experience depression. You know, we, we wrapped up in our sports. We get wrapped up in it, and you no longer have it. You have a serious mental health problems. You feel something is missing from your life. You feel lost as a person. All your life, you've been pushing yourself to be the best, and you're still doing it. And when it's no longer there, when it's no longer there. So, as I continued through my career as a, a basketball player, I hit two periods where I couldn't play. Twice. You guys are ninth grade high school student. You have made a team or in a program and you're still moving forward. But I'm going to share with you some things that could happen between now and then and some things that happened when some, to some student athletes that didn't make it. And what I call this, I call this a GYAP season. And it's a temporary season when you cannot play. But the G stands for get, the Y stands for your, the A stands for attention, and the P stands for player. One day, and I hope this doesn't happen to any one of you, but one day you may get hurt and a trainer or a coach tell you, you're not prepared, you're not gonna play practice in the next game. You're not gonna play in the next game. You can bet it will get your attention. You can bet. GYAP season is a season that what I call is a temporary season when you are not playing your favorite sport. Now everyone knows what's, what an off season is. Now GYAP season can occur to the fall. We was faced with a pandemic. We all know about this pandemic. We didn't know if we were gonna have a game yesterday or when it was gonna come back. You know, what did you guys decide to do? Probably nothing. Think about, oh my goodness, I'll be glad when this is over with. You may have an injury, athletic related or not, and you ain't playing no more. You may, be, you may have academic issues and you are suspended from the team. You're not good enough to make the team. A lot of you played with some players from the time you was nine, 10, 11, and you can look around and those players are not here anymore. They were not good enough. You guys are still off. But this is gonna happen to you. When you and the coach have a disagreement and you decide to quit, you know, then you're no longer a player. All right, now I wanna share with you a time that I almost lost it. I almost gave it up back in high school. We had this practice and the coach instructed me and my point guard to, from my point guard to throw the ball to me, all right? So in high school, we had practice, my point guard bring the ball up. I was on the low block. 
He said, bring the ball up. I ran up into the middle key, catch the ball. My job was catch the ball, turn around, shoot that jump ball back in my high school. All right. We ran that play about three times. My point guard brought the ball up, jumped up, kick, caught the ball, turned around, threw it to the wing. Coach was getting hot. Came and did it again. I caught the ball and I threw it out and I threw it back to him. And then the coach on the sideline just blew his blew a whistle. He said, God dang, James Johnson, why don't you just catch the ball and shoot the ball? And I had a best friend that was on the sideline. He said, I don't have to worry about KD shooting the basketball. KD was a shooter. And I said, KD, why don't you grow six foot tall, come up here and take my place and let me lead his gym. And my coach could have at that point in time said, you know what, I'm through with you. You need to go home someplace and don't come back or change your attitude. But he didn't say that. We went on with practice and I went on to college and play basketball, but I almost lost it. That was my first time that I almost gave up playing sport in my high school. However, I share with you, I had a lot of division one offers, but I ended up going to this school called Bishop College in Dallas, Texas. Bishop College, a division three school. Something I didn't know at the time I went there that a division three do not offer scholarships. I made a choice to go to this school here. And I went my first year and right at, at semester break, um, we had to, you know, semester break in and then you go back after Christmas. I went back and I couldn't register because I had a tuition bill. And then I went back the second year and then I couldn't register again because now I had a bill for the full year. I talked to the coach and the coach said, we don't offer you a scholarship and we didn't give you a scholarship. You needed to have grant aid to go to this school. Oh, I was hurt. You know, here I am thinking I got a scholarship at the Division III Bishop College School and now I'm in the financial aid office trying to get registered. And, and, and I missed a team meeting. And the coach saw me in the, in the uh, line and he came up to me and he just cussed me out. He was about this big. And he said, Johnson, you better bring your tall, lanky butt to this, to this meeting and don't you miss another one. And I said, but coach, I can't register. He said, I don't give a blah, blah about you register. You just don't miss me. And he left and he walked down the hall and I'm sitting there like this here. I'm like, what am I gonna do? He got by way down the hall and I shouted. I said, coach, I quit. I'm leaving this school. I'm never gonna come back. He said, you are not gonna be about nothing. You ain't going anywhere. You know, and I left the school. My first solution for all of you, every athlete need to identify a person who will be a great stuff mentor. When I left, when I quit and I went back home, that's where I had to find somebody that could give me a direction, that can give me guidance, because at that point I was lost. I didn't have it. I no longer had the uh, aspiration to play basketball and it just happened to be my father. So you need to identify a person who will be a great stuff mentor. Now, a mentor can help to guide and shape your present situation and future opportunities for the better. But a GSU mentor is a person who understands athletes, the pressure and expectation that we go through. And however, they can, they will help guide and direct and shape your present situation, future opportunity. That person knows us. So that's the first recommendation that I'm recommending to all of you. While you're in ninth grade, going on up, is to identify someone that can be in that place as that mentor, as I did, my father. Yeah, that's me, Duncan. If you if you gotta go, you can go for that. So oh, okay. yeah. Good, good, that's what I want to hear. So that's me, I was a poster boy in college. And while I was at home with my first mentor, my father, and we was trying to figure out my direction, okay, I went and played in our summer lead called Dunbar, Dunbar Recreation Center. There was a lead that had former athletes, former NBA players, former colleges, players in there. And I was in there and I said, I'm gonna show it to the crowd. My, my, my signature dunk.
This is done that I perfected my first year in college. I caught the ball. Coming off the rim, I caught it. And I'm heading down the floor. And I'm going, choo, choo. I said, yeah, I'm going to show out. I'm going to climb on this. What I'm going to do. You know, and I got to that free throw line. And then I went up. And I went up. And I started going up. And then I brought the ball here because my signature dunk, as you see on this picture, was like this here. And then I brought my arm back, getting ready to slam that ball. Then I still know there was a breeze. I'm like, darn. And I came down out the air. And when I came down, I looked up, and one of the better players looked like he was just hanging my ball on the rim, just holding it there. I mean, and, and just like in midair, where he can just put his signature on there. And I'm down there, and you should have saw the crowd. They had erupted. They was like, oh, they were high fiving over there. And I'm like, oh, and I'm going back down. And I said, whoo, boy, that was, whoo, that was nice. But I was so embarrassed by what had happened. I thought that I, you know, was that good that I was going to do it. You know, nevertheless, but uh, that was one of my moments, you know, uh, after my first year in college playing basketball. Okay, so my mentor, my GSU mentor, my father, developed a plan. One of the plans was to go back to a junior college, not the bishop, a junior college, North Lake Community College. And while at North Lake, I was to, and I needed to hone my skills, improve my skills, because those division ones that knew who I was coming out of high school did know who I was at that point in time, after being out a year and a half. So I had to get back on their radar. So I attended North Lake. And when I attended that in that spring, they was almost, you know, 10 games in. They were like 0 and 13, you know. And I jumped on that team and I said, I'm gonna put them on a map. And I went and I played and I worked hard and uh, we won some games. I, I became Metro Player of the Year, Texas Metro Player of the Year. I became that, you know. I went to practice, worked hard. I went before practice, worked hard. After practice, worked hard. On the weekend, working hard, just trying to improve, just trying to get better. You know, I want to go to the league. You know, that's what I want to do. You know, worked hard, worked hard. And then, and then I went to class, and I left class, and I went, I worked in the cafeteria. I just kept working hard. Nothing, I only focused on basketball, getting better. That when the semester ended, and I had the opportunity to move from North Lake to go to Washington State. And when I got to Washington State, and I had to send my transcript up to Washington State, I met some coaches up there, and I ran into my second time that I could not play my favorite sport because of this right here. You see it, I achieved a GPA of 0 0.89, 0 0.89. I think I probably got the 89, probably, and I'm not sure what that was in. But that was not my concentration to stay academically prepared. My concentration was to improve, and improve my game and, and, and hoping that I would run into some professors that would pass me and was hoping that I could, was gonna get into a one of these universities that overlook that because of my skill. And however, once I got to Washington State, that didn't happen. I met Coach Bob Johnson from Seattle University. I met head coach Brad Jackson from Western Washington University. University of Washington, didn't even give me a look because of that GPA. That had nothing to do with my skill because of that GPA. You know, the NCA would, 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 would just, just, just firing coaches and, and, and coaches were just being banded if they just brought in athletes that could not do it in the books. So they weren't gonna touch me and they did not. So those two coaches right there, they set me down, they talked to me. You know, I had not played a single basketball game with neither one of them. 
and they expressed an interest in me as a person. And those two coaches told me the next solution that I needed to add to my life plan that I'm presenting to you guys. They said, you are going to have to go back to a school and you're gonna to have to show that you can do academic work before you can get anybody to college and play basketball again. And they said to me, focus on academics beyond eligibility and understand how you learn. This is what they said to me. Focus on academics beyond eligibility and understand how you learn. We, we get in these systems and all we wanna do, we athletes, is to be eligible so we can just play. We gotta do more. And I want you to think about that. We gotta do more, not just maintain eligibility. We gotta do more. And that's what I'm telling you. The second thing I want you to put in your head that I recommend that you do. Know, understand how you learn. Take courses to earn a degree when you get there, and at the same time, gain an understanding as to how you learn and what type of learner you are. While you're going through this high school system, I know that your counselor really works on your schedule, but if you have an opportunity to add things to your schedule, add it. Don't just be fine with just being in a shop class. Don't just be okay with being in weight training class that you know you're gonna get an A from. And don't just be okay with being in your sports particular class and you're gonna get an A grade from that. You know, understanding all core courses that you have to take for the NCAA and learn how you understand what you've been taught. Brad Jackson, one of the coaches, Share it with me. There's a junior college up here in this area called Skagit Valley Junior College. He suggested that I get into that junior college to improve my academics, not to play sport, but to improve that GPA. Because if I didn't do it, again, I could not get in anyone's college. So he suggested Skagit Valley. And he said to me, when you get in there, don't play. When you get in there, take core courses. You gotta take an English course, a social science course, a science course, a math course. They gotta be core courses. And then you gotta achieve a B or better, a 3.0, a B or better, you know, a 4.8, a 3.B. This is what you gotta do. You gotta take three classes part time, three of them, and you cannot do a C below that. B or better. And then, they asked me, he asked me, can you do it? Well, I thought it was an insult, but why not ask? He saw my transcript. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I can do it. I ain't got no problem with that. And I enrolled into Skagit Valley. I didn't play basketball. And I did a year there. And I did come out with a great GPA. I did a year and I came out with a great GPA. Okay, so, so far, I shared with you two solutions that I want you to just start really kind of thinking on about. You know, the first solution was identify a great self you mentor. Pick someone you can trust and will see you as more than an athlete. You know, be thinking about that as you're sitting in this seminar. And the second one, focus on academics beyond eligibility. This is the second thing I ask you to do. Focus on academics right now beyond eligibility. Don't just pick classes to maintain eligibility. Pick courses towards a degree and courses that will help you understand how you learn. In college, you really are in charge of what you're gonna take. Yeah, as an athlete, they have advisors. Yeah, as a coach gonna guide you too, and he gonna suggest some of these other easy classes, but at that time, be prepared to say, you know what? I'm gonna take this easy class, but I also wanna add this to my course too. That's your control. So start thinking about that right now. You will have that control over that. So these are the two so far you should be thinking about adding to your athletic plan right now. My third solution, discover 
and develop other interests outside of sports. Okay, again, number three, discover and develop other interests outside of sports. If you hit a GYAP season, you will have an off season. We all have those. But if you hit a GYAP season and an off season, at this point in time, you still have your sports schedule of working out to improve. But add into your schedule a discovery of some other interests. And once you figure out what those other interests are, during those GYP season and during your off season, work on those skill set as well. Okay? During that GYP season, if you hit that and you cannot play your sport for whatever reason, but definitely in the off season, yes, you have your sports schedule, strength schedule, you know, where you're going to get, but add time in there where you're looking at developing other skills of interest. This is my third recommendation to you, all of you. Okay, my third. I gained my eligibility back. My new GPA was a 4.0. I was ready to go again. I'm back and ready to go. And Western Washington University is the college that I decided to go to out of all the three colleges up in Washington. I decided to attend Western Washington University. And in my first year at Western Washington University, I was sitting with the head coach, and him and I was talking about my academic situation. And believe it or not, even though I'm sure any solution with you, I still was tunnel focused on just going to the lead. Well, I was sat down with this coach and I said to him, you know, I'm so glad I'm able to play for you. And I said, I want to bring you a championship. And I said to him, just put me in some basket weaving classes. I, I kid you not, because I'm going to bring you a championship, then I'm going on into the league. Well, we know I didn't go into the league because I shared that with you. But at that point, I didn't know I was not. So I said, just give me those. And that coach looked at me right in my eyeball. Great man. And he said, you know, this is the wrong place for you, James Johnson. We don't do that here. We, we don't do that here. If that's what all you want, then you need to go find you another school to go to. And boy, I was shocked. And we called at the time that Coach Jackson was about to get rid of his prize recruiting. He was about to send me home. Once again, I was making a poor mistake, trying to make a decision. But he said, no, not here. And after that, I said, okay, I understand you. And I appreciate you looking at me more than just as an athlete. And then he, he introduced me and sent me over to the academic center on, on Western campus. And I met my final, the final piece of the puzzle. His name was Mr. Tad Pratt Jr. I'll share a little bit more about him. But in that first year, after getting my academics together, me and Mr. Pratt, we played uh, a year. And, um, when I went over and met Mr. Pratt, the final piece that fell in place was, I identified a great stuff you transition coach, a GSU coach. Now this is Mr. Pratt. He was my GSU, my transition coach. He sat me down. We started looking at everything from, from, from what I did at Bishop, what I did at North Lake, what I did at Skagit, and what I'm going to do at Western Washington University. And he said, well, I'm going to help you transition. We're going to put together a plan for you if you don't go into the league. That's what we're going to do. This person, this transition person that you're going to need to find is a person who will help you create a transition plan from playing your favorite sport. That was Tad Pratt Jr. for me. That first year, we surprised some people. We played in a tournament. We lost in our conference tournament. 
The second year, we, we didn't surprise some people. They knew that we was coming at them. We won the, the, the conference championship and went off and played in the NAI National. As you know, I didn't make it. However, as I added those solutions that I shared with you, and I connected with my final person, Ted Pratt, my transition coach, this is what happened. When my name was not called, yes, I was devastated. However, I was okay. Because after that, I became the student assistant basketball coach at Western Washington University. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree. I worked as an academic counselor at the campus of Western Washington University. I worked in admissions office as a counselor. I obtained my master's degree from the University of Arizona. And now, 30 plus years as a college basketball coach, 30 plus years as a college professor, I'm an entrepreneur, a creative business, I'm an athletic consultant, and I'm a motivational speaker. Now that you've heard my story, and now that I have recommended these solutions, now you're aware that the percentage of student athletes leaving NCAA Division I to play professional sport, you know that percent, is only two. I'm not asking you to give up. I'm not asking you to, to understand. Now that you know the percentage of student athletes leaving high school, you got three to four years in high school, and you're going to continue to work hard in your sports. And I want you to, and everybody here do too. But only one to six percent of you guys are going to get a Division I offer. Now that you are aware of that at the end of it all, once you can no longer play, there are some things that you that could happen to you. You can become suicidal. You will lose your identity. Imagine, I was James Johnson, Western Washington University basketball player. I was James Johnson, Little Rock Central High basketball player. I was James Johnson, blah, blah, blah. But then now I'm just James Johnson. The loss of identity. Imagine that you can have some health challenges simply because you can no longer play your favorite sport. As it is time to implement a solution today that will help prepare you for a successful transition. As I'm closing out, I just want you to think about one of them that I gave you. I don't want you to really jump into all four. Just take one and decide that, okay, I need to implement this into my plans, life plan, workout plan, as soon as possible. Just take one. Whether you identify that, that first mentor, even when you identify a person that be your transition coach, and that can be the same person. Whether you decide to discover some other skills, or whether you right now gonna say, I'm gonna focus on academics beyond eligibility. Just take one of them, okay? Let me take the time to thank coach so-and-so for bringing me in here today. And I hope that I have helped and will help many of you as you continue on. Your plan, as I'm sure, is Identify one of these, identify great stuff, focus on academics beyond eligibility, decide, discover other interests outside of sport, identify a GSU transition coach. Thank you for having me. And if you have any questions, this is the time, Q&A.